And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture Sanford. dipped in blood, and his name is called Sanford. the Word of God. <laughs> it's like this and like that and like this and uh, it is what it is, but I am that I am. It's who says what's what and that's that. No, it pans a bunch. You still have my trust in funds. I bought that lava now. Now the couches ain't adding up like an abacus. Yeah, yeah. It's lights out in your city trying to get you on this right road. That left ain't busy. This little light of mine can't be contained. I know four walls. Can't keep my people under a steeple post all to call. We be up and on the highways in the byway. This how you feel You know what it is You may not like it But it is like it or not And it's like that It's like that And like this and like that And I had to draw a line That cut my circle in half I am it a glory be to God What we got Wolves and coyotes Disguised in wool clothing Bullying the wool over the eyes Of an unholy society Got me rolling my eyes At Wally hiding behind And I'll be just beside a piety Like really? Oh please don't even try Why you surprised? Talking about oh me oh my I'm on my road runner Me I told them to keep both eyes wide open, but it hurts them to look like they got soap in their eyes. So they play blind like they got Georgia on their mind. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. It's gang, gang, game over when it come to God. Yeah, we knock the devil out. Got the chance sitting on the canvas, go throw in the towel. Congregation going wild, cause we know that he defeated demons. Flee when we on our knees, when we talk to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and he coming back. Told you all he real, spin facts at you, but you sitting there and laugh. It was finished on the cross. With his blood, it was done. Don't come at me with the doubt. Game over, yeah, we won. OG Jake, you want the truth, so come in the booth. We talking that talk, we cooking the soup. Say what you want, my God never lose. I'm about his biz, got faith on the move. Bright light, I'ma let it shine. Don't watch, it's all his time. Seek aim, you just might find Prince of peace in your mind. I'll be repping to the death of me. Bars who spit, he ain't set for me. Victory is what he left for me. He beat death so I could put death to me. That's fact. Yeah, I got my life on track, I see no trouble. No matter what I face, my faith ain't subtle I'm moving forward, coming out the rubble Ain't no way I'm losing favor, overcoming every struggle Yeah, gotta make this life worth living Never gonna face defeat when I got Jesus as my vision That's my greatest decision, I got that victory living Like I won't ever be quitting, I wish these people would listen And that's a given, yeah Keep making moves, no hesitation No matter your situation, Jesus has no complications He'll overcome all your face and keep that faith, no aggravation yeah. Keep following your destination That's how you feel That's how you feel you know what it is, you may not like it, but it is like it or not, and it's like that, it's like that. Poetics, bring the drums in. Get, 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 wait till the whole world hears this. Have you covered in the block, but you still queer? You either new or you're not, take a clip. Pick up, you don't know the place, I got your body, get your ears fixed. We're telling everybody here you're a believer. Nah, I don't believe it, you ain't never been a leader. How is you a dude when you never been a reader? I can tell that you love Jesus by the way you treat the people, yeah. And don't say it if you really don't mean it. Well, you don't want to blame if an anger delete. I want peace with everyone and much impossible. It's hard to keep peace, it seems impossible. Especially when the thing that you preach ain't popular. Like, I don't want to hit, don't speak, don't bother us. I see you stumble because you don't know where to start next. Far fetched, hard to reach with your arm stretched. But examine yourself and get you a hard check. Christ is the only way to come up out the darkness. You got a lot of pain, you got a lot of hurt. That's why you smoke weed, man, that's why you pop perks. You got no doubt, man, you got no nerves. And what I got first, man, it just got worse. Be strong, keep on till the preach on. Be cool, be calm, it will be long. Matter of fact, got a shoulder I can lean on. My father up above, many bigger than your King Kong. I'm saying, blood by, we won, you lost. I trust in the only one, the only one that's my God. Born twice, 
that was no lie, yeah, be done. That king no gun, that will be done. I thank you, God, for your son. I pray, I trust, keep faith and obey. He got it for me, who can stop me, man, and get in my way. It's up, yeah, it's stuck. Straight up, prayers up. We bout to drop a kingdom bomb and make the whole world wake up. I get kind of violent on a mic, cause I rap for the lion. I don't mind if you like it or despise it, because I'm sent to the byways. Because I bricks in a cold heart like a nice pick. Burning like a pilot, but I can fly, get cold with it like a migrant. Ah, I'm Elijah because I don't mail. I just fill up my trust that he lights it, killing my flesh with a pipe wrench. Fill up my cup to the right brim, then I rent over like a dry bitch. You cannot fake for them, my friends. If you're not a better, then you might get caught. If you defend it, my darkest, you will attend it. You found the decline, I said it, the cloud of the wilderness. You caught the good one of repentance, but you would never devolve when the pit is hitting. It got me sick of the wickedness, you would never defeat it, but live it, defeat it, get to defeat it. My king of leaving the beaver, you're gonna burn it, talk a fever in the packet, heat like a needle. You wanna be damn me, but you ain't a god, and even demons believe in the most high. Don't die, you're full of yourself, you prideful. Go to go, read in your Bible. Better go home right now, throw all of them, all of them idols. You do not wanna be rivals, but it's all set in our final. You do not wanna be liable. My strength, so the mountains go move on. Don't be that weird Christian. Ain't nothing worse than that judging and hating, not loving while living in sin, Christian. Or the one that's abusing his grace and his mercy while telling these people to sin, Christian. You're making this look bad. Saying you're true, dad. We need to love more. They thirsty for righteousness. We need to look to the sun more. Yashua. 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 Microphone and hide what's going on inside the house. Like you ain't wildin' out. Wildin like out. You ain't disrespect your wife before you took the time to grab the pen and write about it. Ah. You recite or flip the script, but people not around you. Not around if your you. family was to answer what they say they found they you. Leave them off a godliness of where you got be less omnipotent. Like faulty checks when a bank on you, do you bounce? Ah. I'm just saying, now can you live in denial? <laughs> Liberated from Egypt, but Pharaoh sinking the bow. <laughs> Leaving you bound deep in the very trees and you clown. But a circus you live is a prison you choose not to get out of. Show me what you do and I'll show you your motives. Yeah. 
Show me what you love, it'll show where your heart is. Show me how you grind, and I'll show you an office. Show what you pursue, it'll show who your God is. See through all the lies, and it ain't no surprise. The deeper motives that you hide, but we will not stay quiet. Everything you do in the dark, soon will come to the light. All of your falsifying dies, no, we will not. How to speak in court. Those in government are trying to impose a foreign law on you by taking you out of your godly venue and putting you in a foreign venue to answer a charge to a foreign law. They are always testing the spirits. Therefore, when you walk into a foreign court, you must import God's law into that court in order to distinguish and separate yourself from that court's foreign law. When you are confronted by governing authorities, pray in spirit while you are talking to them. For example, Father, just give me the words. Tell me what it is you want me to say and I'll say them because I know that only your knowledge and wisdom will deliver me out of these tribulations. The following responses I'm going to say are only to show the general spirit of how one may fend off the fiery and fiery darts of the natural man's courtroom and are not to be taken word for word all questions and answers are different according to each individual situation, so let the Holy Spirit lead you. Enter the scripture into evidence. Some have had their cases dismissed by simply doing this. You can stand before the judge holding a Bible and ask him, where is your law? Does it say that your law is superior to God's law? They can't answer. All they do is ban you from their courts. And with the name, if you have not answered the fictitious name that Caesar has given you, Caesar will assign a different fictitious name to you. John Doe never answered to, his, to this name. John Doe, a fictitious name frequently used to indicate a person for the purpose of argument or illustration or in the course of enforcing a fiction in the law. Bolivar's Law Dictionary 1914 page 1696 by answering to this name, you admit you are a person engaged in an argument and are partaking of Caesar's fictions in the law. If the judge calls you out, calls out your name, John Doe, for example, even if John Doe is your God-given name, do not respond, since that name is not yours. Even if it sounds like your name, it will not be the correct spelling because all names on their processes are spelled in all capital letters. And since your name is not spelled in all capital letters, that name is not yours. That is not who you are. You may say, are you trying to hail me? If just judge says yes, then say, I send you greetings from our King and Lord Jesus the Christ. I'm a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and I am here to execute his will and testament. I could not be who you think I am because the name you have is in all capital letters, which, as it is written in your law, is a misnomer. There are possibly two ways the court may proceed. One, the judge may have tried to ignore your abatement or a misnomer and pretend it's not important. In this case, face the prosecutor and say, for the record, I am not the one named in this particular action, by virtue of the fact that the name of your process is spelt in all capital letters, and therefore could not be my name. My God-given name does not appear on your purported process. I am who my lawgiver says I am, not who you say I am. Is it not written in your law that no man can sue somebody in the name of another? You are attempting to deceive me and the magistrate and this honourable court by your imposition of your purported process by suing me in the name of another. This must be abated as a public nuisance. Number two. On the other hand, the judge might say, yes, it is spelled in capital letters. Well then respond, 
my god given name is spelt with the capital D lowercase a lowercase n lowercase I lowercase e lowercase l etc and proceed to spell it if the judge says something like let's go over this I want to get the spelling correct your first name is you should recognize here that the judges patronizing acceptance of the proper spelling is done for deceptive purposes by the acceptance of the proper spelling by the court they have recognized your substance in Christ and have a abandon the ability of prosecuting you. One should object to this acceptance because the court can normally only prosecute the person, which is the name in all capitals, not the substance. If objection is not made, it is taken by the court that you are given permission to be prosecuted. So say something like, I object to being prosecuted under my God-given name. The court does not have the ability of prosecuting me under my true name without my permission. For the record, I do not give this court permission to do so. If the court addresses you as a Mr. So-and-so or as Sir, respond, For the record, I am not a Mr. or a Sir, for those are pagan and heathen titles of nobility. If they continue to use those designations, it doesn't matter. For you have rebutted the presumption that you are one of their pagan entities. The court is presuming you are the person named on their papers. They may try to test you to establish a response from you to the name on their papers so that they may presume jurisdiction over you. For example, the court may say, Mr. So and so, why don't you have a seat for just a minute? Then, after you sit down, the court might say, Mr. So-and-so, would you stand up, please? Having responded to the name by sitting down and standing up at the direction of the judge, the judge can now presume that you are the name and are one and the same, due to the obedience shown by his commands. If the court says, well, it says on the paper that you are so-and-so, then reply, you say it does. If the court says, so are you saying you are not so-and-so? Do not answer yes or no. Do not deny or confirm it. Simply say, as I told you, you say it does. If the court asks you, well, what is your name? Reply, I will also ask you one thing. Is a name a note, symbol or mark of a thing given by those in authority to those in subjection to an authority? If the judge is honest, he should concur and say yes. Reply, well, I am under the authority of Christ Jesus, and I am condemned by him to render to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's, which you'll find in Matthew 22, 21, Mark 12, 17, and Luke 20, 25. Since I do not have a name given to me by Caesar, I do not have a name that can be rendered to Caesar. If the court asks what others call you, say, that's not important and it's irrelevant. What's important is that I am not so-and-so. My accuser presumes I am so-and-so. But it is written in both God's law and man's law that everything must be proved by at least two witnesses. I see no witnesses here. If accused of being a resident, respond, I deny I am a resident. These are all presumptions. If they say their laws apply to non-residents as well, respond, I deny I am a non-resident or civilian, person, human being, etc. My father has never described me as such. I'm a bondservant of a sojourner with Christ Jesus. You are making presumptions contrary to the facts already in evidence. If asked what evidence, respond, the truth of the matter spoken. I am who my father says I am, not who Caesar says I am. For instance, are you breathing on your own or is God giving you your breath? If you have control over your own breath, then you would live forever. When does your DNA come from? Where does it come from? Were you created randomly by a chance of Caesar or were you created by God? You are living proof that there is a creator. If they say, I was created by random chance, reply, then I will randomly walk out of this court. If the court reads the charges to you, they are still against the person only. only re <laughs> one only reply could be, those charges are against the person. Daniel Shoals, in all capital letters, 
which I am not, because I am known by, and do the will of, my headman, me father only. If the court has your fingerprints and tries to admit evidence to prove you to be one of theirs, such as showing the mugshot from their computers or a signature of you from a piece of paper, these are fictions and can be rebutted. If they point to a picture of you and ask, is this you? Reply, I don't know that is me. It might be an image of you, but it is not you. Besides, anybody can put a picture in a computer and add whatever false information they want about that picture. If they ask if that's your signature on a piece of paper and claim it is as evidence, reply, I don't know that is my signature. It is only another false image. It might be a signature from your old man, but you have become a new man in Christ. But you must repent of that. You just can't pick and choose what you want to be your signature. You must repent of merging yourself with the unclean things and don't do it again. That is part of putting off the old man. You may also add, by the law of my master, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. 2 Corinthians 13, column 1. Where are your witnesses? You are asking me to be a witness against myself. Everything on a piece of paper is an idle word. Everything on a computer is a false image. You presume that this is my signature. You presume that is me in the computer. But those presumptions are all based on false images. You may also say, it is written in your law that computer generated images evidences nothing and has no substance. It is but conclusionary reasoning indulged in to supply the absence of facts and reason means whatever you want it to mean. Authority. It is written in your law that no man is ignorant of the law, which is a maxim. The scripture says, there is one lawgiver, James 4, 12. The Lord is our lawgiver. It is also written in your law, we are all bound to our lawgiver, regardless of your personal interpretation of reality. It's a maxims. Legality is not reality. Another maxim. The reality is what God says it is, not what your perception of it is. It is also written in your law. There is no fiction without law. Fictions arise from the law and not the law from fictions. If the judge says you cannot bring God's law in his court, you can say, I did not bring God's law in here. You did. I'm simply confirming it. If the judge says no preaching is allowed in his courtroom, you can respond by saying, I am not preaching. I am declaring the law. It is only your opinion that I'm preaching. Is your opinion greater than the law? If he labels you a defendant, respond by saying, I am not defending anything. I am maintaining my standing in law in the office of Christ. I am one of several ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5, column 20. John 20, column 21. And it is written in your law, it is contrary to the law of nations to violate the rights of ambassadors. That's another maxim. If they ask you to prove ambassadorship, say, it is written in your law, everything must be proved by two witnesses. I am one that bears witness of myself. The works I do bears witness of me. The scriptures bear witness of me. The Holy Spirit bears witness of me. All the saints in heaven bear witness of me, and my Father that sent me bears witness of me. If they ask who your Father is, reply, as an ambassador for Christ, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. John 8, column 19. If they ask where in the scripture it says you are an ambassador, reply, it is not written in your law. Ignorance of law does not excuse misconduct in anyone, least of all a sworn officer of the law. Another maxim. And all men know God. Maxim. If they try to discuss the facts of the case, reply, Do you say this thing or of yourself, or did others tell it to you of me? John 18, column 34. Do not discuss the facts of the case, because it will be defensive, and it will cause joinder. 
and the court may presume jurisdiction. The court will seek the benefit of discussion in order to further enhance the jurisdiction of the court. In this situation, we must stay with the sword of the word, avoiding any defensive posture or addressing the facts of the case, thereby avoiding any joinder. If the judge threatens you with contempt of court, reply, I am not being contemptuous because I am speaking the truth and the truth is not contemptuous. If you are claiming that the truth is contemptuous, then you are claiming that God is contemptuous, for he is the author of all truth. Remember, you are in court to declare the law and not to dispute or join with their jurisdiction. Raise a political question because there's no jurisdiction there. An example of a political question would be to confess that you are a bondservant of Christ. Man's law only applies to persons, and under the law of slaves, slaves are not persons. The court recognises this, and judges cannot decide on political questions. That political question is, who do you belong to? Which kingdom do you walk in? Do you walk in man's kingdom or God's kingdom? You have to evidence that you are part of his kingdom by the words that come out of your mouth. You can say you're a Christian all day long and you love Jesus, but if you partake of things of the world, then you belong to the world, and the world will take jurisdiction over you. Jesus told us we cannot serve two masters, and if you are serving two masters, that second master will have jurisdiction over you. If you challenge jurisdiction in a court because of your status, as soon as you argue status, you give them jurisdiction, because you are arguing a moral question, and moral questions are their realm. If judge keeps making presumptions, reply, Your Honour, you have become a party to the action. Would you like to step down from the bench and join the prosecutor? If accused of being brought in court for breaking the law, respond, I am here by visitation, to declare and testify to you the gospel of Christ. This is why God brought me here, to bring the gospel. You should only make positive declarational statements. You don't ever hear Christ saying, I believe, and then go on with an opinion or saying. The morality of this situation dictates this. He never spoke like that. At every question there was that was ever put to him, he declared the law and wasted no words. Acts 5, colon 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. They didn't say we believe we ought to obey God, or we think that we ought to obey God, or we have heard that we ought to obey God. When you say I believe I ought to obey God, that's not a positive declaratory statement. When you say I believe, that's an opinion and the court can now discuss that. But if you make a positive declaration, statement, such as, we ought to obey God rather than men. The issue is not open for discussion. The issue was already settled in God's word, and there's nothing that I can do about it, and there's nothing that you can do about it. It's out of our hands. When you say, I believe, or I feel, then someone can attack your feelings or your thoughts, and twist you around like the serpent did to Eve in the Garden of Eden and get you to walk away from the truth. All you should do is make declaration statements, the same statements that God has already made and declared in his word. And this is how you walk in his way. Basically, you answer like Christ answered. It is written. You basically are saying, I didn't write it, but these are the things that I have seen and heard from God. You are going back to 1 Corinthians 2, Colon 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The spiritual man judges, of, judges all things, and is judged by no man, the natural man. If you speak in the spirit the words that Christ spoke, and do the things in spirit that Christ did, you are judged of no man, because you have the mind of Christ, and you stand before God in Christ's righteousness, not in front of natural man who says, you can't do that. Romans 15, column 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, 
If Christ didn't please himself, neither are we to please ourselves. We are to be as our master. John 6, 28-29 Then say they unto him, we shall, we shall we do, that we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, this ye believe on him who he hath sent. Not to believe the government, but Christ Jesus. If the accuser or the judge says, You are anti-government, reply, I deny I am anti-government, but I am for government as long as they punish evil and reward good. All governments are upon Christ's shoulder, and if I were to disobey God's law, then I would be anti-government. If judge says all governments are ordained by God, reply, they are ordained only when they do God's will. But just because God ordains government for his purposes, it does not mean it is a godly government. God does use evil to bring people closer to him, but God does not want us to obey evil governments. If the judge says, the scripture says we are to obey governing authorities, reply, scripture also explains the government's duty before God. Can you show me in scripture where God authorizes the governing authority to bring punishment upon someone for exercising God's law? Christ Jesus and the apostles were imprisoned and executed for obeying God rather than man. If they impute 1 Peter 2, 13, 16, they also impute Romans 13, colon 1 to 10. It's the same subject matter. Is it not written in your law that the law does not compel a man to do the impossible? Maxims of law. And also any law contrary to the law of God is, not, is no law at all another maxim. I was exercising my duty of movement upon the common ways. My warrant for doing this is written in the word of God. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, column 15. Also, to visit orphans and widows. James 1, column 27. And it is also written, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. If courts say, you are here because you are charged with so-and-so, reply, I am here because I have obeyed God rather than man. Acts 5, colon 29. Your duty is to punish evildoers as God has defined evil. What evil have I done? Evil as defined by God and not man. If asked how human laws are against God laws, reply, the scripture says, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that love another hath fulfilled the law. Romans 13, 8. When a bondman of Christ has fulfilled the law of God, what other duty is there? I have done my duty as a good and lawful minister of Christ. Everything else is an imposition between myself and God. Man's law are compelling performance, and as such is an in to position because it creates a new obligation to another outside of love and outside of God and becomes an additional an addition to the word of God. The full body of believers in Christ exists apart from and beyond the control of and not subject to any earthly government. Jesus did not use your codes, rules and regulations for the things he did and neither do I use your codes, rules and regulations for the things that I do. It is also written in your law that an act does not make a man guilty unless the intention be guilty, since my intention is to do God's will, and God's will is not evil, I could not possibly be guilty in this thing I am accused of. Now, it is written in your law that an officer of the law is appointed and you don't become an officer of the law by having an employment contract with a dead corporation. It would make him, at most, an agent, not an officer. Officers are in law, not in contract. It is written in your law that corporations such as the city of Burpengary, the state of Queensland, have no souls. They are dead, and the dead cannot be sued, and the dead cannot receive an injury. Can you show me any law that says the living must be joined to the dead? God's law says, 
that we are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6, column 14. And it is also written in your law that unequal things ought not to be joined, which is a maxim. Therefore, it is God's will that I not be joined to the dead, for Scripture says, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Matthew 22, column 32. The Court I am not sure that I understand what you just said. How does that apply to us? Reply. Unequal things should not be joined. So? The judge might continue to test you as to the implications of it and to see if you have a full understanding of those implications. Court. What are you talking about that is unequal? Reply. It goes back to, there is no law that says the living should be yoked to the dead, so I should not be joined to the dead. Court. You mean by being? Reply. The authority of my Father in heaven. This ends the question once and for all by unequivocally stating from whence all authority is derived. There is none higher. Court. So then the legal issue would be whether or not the people would be able to proceed against you? Reply. Lawfully. Do not allow the judge to reduce everything to legality. But remind them that the points that they have been raised must be answered according to law, not legalese. They're a court of law, right? Does me man have authority at law to interpose himself or his purported law between God's justification of my act and bringing punishment on me for exercising God's law? Could it be evil to execute the law of God? I could not possibly have been willful in this thing that I am accused of, for I do only the will of God, and there is no evil or malice in his will. It is written in your law that license are permission to do what would otherwise be unlawful. It is unlawful to execute the law of God. I am his bondservant and must do his law. It is written in your law that any law contrary to the law of God is no law at all. I do his will. I am a minister. As a minister, I am subject to the instructions of him who sent me, and have no discretion in the matter of whether I will obey them or not. I am directed to act or not to act by him. Thus, the acts of a minister are not willful, but are carried out under orders of his superiority, in whom there is no sin. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, column 10, Luke 11, column 2. Obedience from Bolivar's Law Dictionary of 1856. Obedience. The performance of a command. Also, officers who obey the command of their superiors, having jurisdiction of the subject matter, are not responsible for their acts. A sheriff may therefore justify a trespass upon execution, when the court has jurisdiction, although irregularly issued. That's the end of the <clears throat> definition. Likewise, if an officer of Christ obeys a command from his superior, that officer is not responsible for his acts, for he is simply obeying the commands of his superior, who is Christ Jesus. Here is Martin Luther's testimony before the court. Quote, Unless I am refuted and convicted by testimonies of the scriptures or by clear arguments, I am conquered by the holy scriptures quoted by me, and my conscience is bound in the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything, since it is unsafe and dangerous to do anything against the conscience. Here I stand. God help me. Amen. End quote. Acts 13, column 39. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. It is written in your law, Whoever does anything by the command of a judge is not reckoned to have done it with an evil intent, because it is necessary to obey. Maxim. I am obeying the commands of a judge, and I am being persecuted by this court for obeying the commands of a judge. God is our judge. Psalms 50, column 6, 75. Column 7. 
The Lord is our judge. Isaiah 33, column 22. The court. We are interested in justice. Reply. If this court is truly interested in justice, this case should be dismissed. If they say, God's kingdom is not of this world, reply. The phrase, not of this world, means power is not derived from the world or its institutions, but relies upon the word of God and the Holy Spirit for its existence, and not upon the laws of man. Because our lawgiver, Jesus Christ, has no sin, error or corruption, he alone justifies all who exercise his law and call upon him in truth to avoid the consequences of earthly men. But he will not justify you if you have broken God's law. It is the lawgiver of the law you confess who gives you the justification of doing what you have changed, what you have been charged with doing, rather. Romans 8.33 Who shall bring an accusation against the elect of God? It is God who justifies. Now the burden of proof. If someone accuses you of something, the burden of proof is upon the accuser, not you, to prove the accusation. It is not upon the accuser to prove his innocence. Here are some maxims of law. It is in the nature of things that he who denies a fact is not bound to prove it. The burden of proof lies upon him who affirms, not on him who denies. The claimant is always bound to prove. The burden of proof lies on him. Upon one alleging, not upon him denying, rests the duty of proving. Upon the plaintiffs rests the proving, the burden of proof. The necessity of proving lies with him who makes the charge. If someone came up to you and accused you of murdering a woman in the park last night, who is the burden of proof on? Is the burden of proof upon you to prove you did not murder her? To prove you were there last night? To spend all your money on providing witnesses, evidence to prove your innocence? To spend all your money on lawyer fees, court fees and other expenses to prove your innocence? Or is it the burden of proof is upon the accuser? If you ask the accuser, where is the body of this woman I supposedly murdered? And he says, oh, we have no body. And you ask, where are your witnesses that supposedly saw me commit this murder? And he says, ah, uh, there are no witnesses. If you ask the accuser, where is your evidence of me committing a crime? And he says, oh, we have none. The case will be dismissed. You do not have to prove you did not commit this crime. You do not have to prove where you were last night. You do not have to furnish any kind of evidence, one way or another, to the accuser. Likewise, if a uh, policeman issues you a ticket for driving um, without license plates, the burden of proof is upon is upon the state to provide you with uh, that you're a resident of the state. They are the ones who must provide evidence or witnesses. The burden of proof is not upon you to prove you are not a resident of the state. The burden of proof is not up upon you to prove you are a resident of the state. The burden of proof rests entirely upon the accuser. Likewise, when the state asks you for your birth date or birthplace, and you answer truthfully with, I don't know, since this is based upon hearsay information and hearsay is not the truth, the burden of proof is upon them. If I am accused of committing a crime, what does it matter when I am or where I was born? If my guilt of innocence depends upon the place and time of birth, then the burden of proof is upon them to prove this fact. It is not my duty to provide the accuser with evidence to use against me. The testimony by a witness in court is in response to a question as to his own status, for example, age, legitimacy, nationality, is closely related to the subject of pedigree declaration. Pedigree has to do with animals, so they are looking for the human being. A person cannot know these facts except from hearsay information, for he cannot even be informed of these facts until uh, an appreciative time after his birth. People birth verse Wrath 115 CA 
Full stop. 132. Period. Abatement. If you have already served an abatement to the prosecuting lawyer or a court and police officer, the judge might solicit you to cop a plea and thereby walk away from the abatement process. The court may try to say something like, after taking a look at the motion that you have filed today, it is clear to the court that you intend to plead not guilty to the charges. Is that correct? Reply. A motion was not filed with this court, but an abatement and default was served, and all defendants concerning this matter have been abated. The alleged offence is not chargeable due to the fact that they had not answered to the truth in the abatement, thereby disqualifying them from even bringing charges. This case should be dismissed. Two men serve the abatement of the prosecuting attorney, or the lawyer, the presiding judge, and the police officer, and ten days later they came back for an answer or request to extension of time, and there was no answer or extension of time asked for and these two men promptly served the default. A default notice, a default judgment, was then posted in several places in the city of the default judgment. Court. You did that? Reply. No, I didn't do that. Court. Who posted the default judgment? Reply. The Christ Embassy did. The church did. Court. And that was because of a failure to respond to your motion? Reply. Motion, and the reply would be, The abatement is abating an unlawful persona designator or misnomer or nom de jure, and until these defects are corrected in the paperwork, the case cannot proceed. So it went into default, and there was a default judgment. Court. Okay, and how is it from a legal perspective that you believe that that would cause the court to have the authority to actually dismiss the charges? Here the judge is testing the spirits. The test is, will you allow the judge to reduce the truth within the abatement to merge or mere legalism and mere belief? Or will you stand on the rock? Reply, well, I am not who they say I am and so everything was abated. Court. When you say abated, could you please define what you mean in terms of your motion to dismiss on that ground? Reply, well, abatement is a process where you basically say that what paperwork they have is not correct, and until those corrections are made, they cannot continue forward in prosecution. Court, and that is your argument regarding your abatement issue? Here the judge attempts to reduce the truth of the word within the abatement to an argument. We must remember that when the truth is brought to someone, it is not an argument or an apology. It is the truth. So reply. It is not my argument. It was served on the defendants and they defaulted. This is an excellent response. Again, remind them that they are the defendants who did not answer to the truth. Court. It was served on the plaintiff. You are the defendant. It was served on the plaintiff? The judge may attempt to reverse the roles. So clarify with this. Reply. Well, in the abatement, they are the defendants. This reminds them that the abatement question is still pending, and until it is answered, they remain defendants. The judge may continue to test the spirits by attempting to reduce the abatement process to a criminal procedure defence or a motion, which it is not. The court. Okay, first of all, a failure to respond in writing in criminal law, to a defence motion does not result in a default or a dismissal of the case. There is a civil procedure and a, and a criminal procedure, and you are charged in a criminal complaint where is the issue and guided by criminal procedure. The issues are guided by criminal procedure, and criminal procedures does not require a written response for the people or either party for that matter. If a motion is filed, it is not automatically dismissed or granted if the other side fails to respond in writing. Reply, it wasn't a motion. It was an abatement that was served. Do not allow the judge to diminish or reduce the standing of the abatement. Continue to remind them 
that they have not answered to the substance of the issue, unlike kind ought not to be joined. The court may try to lure you in by suggesting that you might want to file a motion. Remind them that you cannot file motions. If the court asks, is there anything at all at this point and time that you feel you do not have that you would need from the prosecution by way of discovery for alleged evidence or something similar? Reply, no, the Lord is my witness. Do not accept any of the poisoned fruit that is offered to you. If the judge keeps interrupting you and will not allow you to finish your statements and will not let you speak, then wait until the next time he asks you a question. When he asks you a question, reply with, for the record. The judge will give you permission to speak for the record. Then you may proceed to say what the Holy Spirit moves you to say without interruption, because the judge cannot hinder a record being made. You may speak as long as you want now. Never when quoting scripture in court, say chapter and verse numbers such as Mark 5, column 2, 3, like I am and have been throughout this recording for those <clears throat> for these have no standing in law and were additions to the scripture these were created by the man and not god instead quote the verse itself word for word this is what jesus did answer in accordance with god's law speak slow don't be quick to answer reflect the character of the christ or of christ and remember rest in the lord Rest in the Lord, rest in the Lord. If they give you a form to sign and it does not give them jurisdiction, it is okay to sign it. They might ask you to sign something which says you will not sue them if they release you. However, you may need to correct a few things. For example, cross out the word defendant and write in accused. Or cross out the word inmate and write in prisoner. Do not defend yourself in court. Just declare the truth. That's what we are here for. Let the Lord defend you. Let him be your shield. Does it seem evil to you that, that I worship the creator of all things and live according to his surpassing law? But this is worthy of honours, not punishment. Had you possessed the hope of salvation from God? Are you not ashamed, having received prosperity from God, to slay his servants and the doers of godliness? It is up to the accuser to prove their statements, and not upon the accused to prove his innocence. However, it is best not to ask the court to prove their accusations against you, because this will be discussing the facts of the case, which may cause joinder, in which they will have acquired jurisdiction over you. The facts of the case are irrelevant if they have no jurisdiction over you. It's just irrelevant. All responses to anything said should be directed to the prosecution, to the prosecuting attorney, not the judge. You should try to bring at least one recogniser with you to court, somebody to witness what takes place in court. If you have not already served an abatement, it is very important that you do not plea in court. If you do, You'll be given them jurisdiction, and your abatement for this misnomer might become meaningless. The plea guilty, not guilty, etc. waivers objection to the complaint for misnomer or for neglect to add a place of residence. State v. Drury, 13RI 510 of 1882. There are many ways you can respond to a request for a plea, depending upon the circumstances in court. Here are a few possible replies. If the judge asks you, how do you plead? Reply, not chargeable. Due to the fact that you are a slave under a different master, this will make it harder for the judge to enter a plea for you. In addition, you may say, I must be returned to the asylum state. In law, asylum means immunity from law as the status of a public minister. If the judge persists in your pleading and threatens that he will enter a plea for you if you don't reply, it is written in your law, the law of God and the law of the land are all one, and both favour and preserve the common good of the land. That's a maxim. 
Therefore, if you move against God's law, then you are not favouring the common good of the land. You are going against God and the law of the land. How do you plead? If the court says, I will go ahead and enter a not guilty plea for you, reply, then why am I in chains? You already told me that I'm not guilty. Court may say, no, that's your plea. Which you may reply, no, I did not plea. You are the one who is pleading that I'm not guilty. What need is there of a trial when the court has just told me I'm not guilty? If they proceed to enter the plea, the court may say, The issue here is whether or not I am going to release you on your own reconnaissance. Reply, For the record, the issue here is not about me, but about whether this is a lawful court. The court may say, you have the right to a lawyer in this matter, and if you cannot afford a lawyer, I will appoint a lawyer for you free of charge. You have the right to a jury trial of a court trial, the right to confront the cross-examine witnesses, the right to present a defence in your own behalf, and the right to remain silent. Those are your rights according to the Constitution. Do you understand those rights? Is asked reply i do not recognize the constitution nor do i claim any constitutional rights there is only one right that is mentioned in scripture and that is the right to the tree of life revelations 22 column 14. the judge might ask are you going to re represent yourself hire a lawyer or do you want the court to appoint a lawyer to represent you in this matter reply I cannot accept any benefits offered by the court, and as a bondman of Christ Jesus, I cannot represent myself, for that denotes self-will. I don't have any self-will. Jesus the Christ is my advocate and wonderful counsellor. 1 John 2, colon 1, Isaiah 9, colon 6. Another possible reply, if the judge is going to enter a plea for you anyway, is to say, no contest, or no lo contentre. This plea neither denies nor confirms the charges. However, it is an implied admission of guilt, and you may be sentenced the same as if you entered a guilty plea. The only difference is that no contest charge cannot be used against you in a future action. After this plea, the judge might say something like, in order to represent yourself and plea no contest, you must waiver your constitutional rights. Do you waive your rights? Reply, I never had and do not now claim any constitutional rights, but whatever rights the court presumes I have, the court may also presume that they are waived. The court may offer to release you on certain conditions, for example, the court may say, okay, you can go home today if you will pay a $400 fine and agree to six months probation. Reply, firstly, I don't have any money, therefore I can't pay a fine. I'm an unprofitable servant, Luke 17, column 10. Secondly, I cannot agree to probation because I cannot enter into any agreements with you. He will most likely sentence you to a lengthy jail term. However, you will most likely be released within a short amount of time because without a name, address, birth date, birthplace, social security number, signature, etc. The county is not able to bill the state for the cost of keeping you in their facilities. Or well, the court may want to set a trial date and ask you, do you want to set the matter for a jury trial or a court trial? It is best to request a trial by judge, not a, not a jury trial. Since juries cannot consider matters of law, they can only consider the facts. Juries don't know the law, whereas the judge is the only one who can judge in matters of law. But, on the other hand, if all the judges are out for blood, it might be best. In that situation, request a jury trial. But either way, you will have the opportunity to let your light shine before them and therefore honour the Father and glorify our Lord and Master. This is your purpose in this situation. If you are sentenced to any kind of fine, such as the judge saying, I sentence you to pay $400, ask him to define a dollar. 
and to also show from his law where what he is asking for will extinguish debt. A possible reply to the judge could be, because of my faith, I do not know what dollars are. Please define what a dollar is, and I'll pay it if I have it. The judge will most likely immediately dismiss your case because they do not, and they cannot, define what a dollar is, without exposing the fact that there are no dollars in existence today. If they are asking you to give them something, they must define what it is they want from you, otherwise how can you give them anything? If the court says they'll accept Federal Reserve notes, reply, Oh, are you saying Federal Reserve notes are dollars? You just asked me to pay you in dollars. The judge will adamantly deny that Federal Reserve notes are dollars and will most likely dismiss your case so as to not expose the truth that Federal Reserve notes are an instrument of debt and is only a promise to pay a debt, but does not want to pay the debt itself. If the judge does not dismiss the case, but is trying to sidetrack the question, you may say, I've never heard of a bank that could not define what a, what a dollar is. In man's law, a bank is defined as a court. In a dictionary of law, William C. Anderson, page 104, it says, Bank, a judge's seat, also a court sitting for the decision of matters of law. And in Black's Law, Dictionary 6th edition, page 144, it says, Bank, a bench or seat. The bench of justice, the bench of a tribunal occupied by judges, the seat of judgment, a court. The full bench or full court, the assembly of all the judges of a court. Hmm. If the prosecuting attorney and judge imprison you, say, The record shows that you have trespassed against my Lord and Saviour, Christ Jesus. The whole process has evidenced contempt of God's law. You have admitted to being a lawful, a lawless character. If the prosecuting lawyer and judge allows you to go free, say, I want to thank you both very much and may God richly bless you both for your compassion and your respect to the law. If the judge asks if there is anything else, you may reply, off the record, and speak directly to the judge. Tell him or her that you have been praying for her or him, and praying that her or him judgment would be a righteous judgment as God would have led him to make. Tell the judge that you, that you know that his job is not easy, and that you have prayed that God would bless him with the strength and the wisdom to do it well, and that God continue to bless him or her. The judge will most likely be under political pressure from the government and from the court that he works in. Followers of Christ are not afraid to be thrown into prison because we are free in Christ, no matter where we are. And they are the ones who are in prison no matter where they are, because they are the slaves of sin. Romans 6, 16-23 Psalms 119 Colon 126. It is the time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void the law. Ephesians 6, colon 11 to 20. Put on the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to stand against the willies of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of the world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your lions girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I might open my mouth boldly 
to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Remember, God is true to his word and is always with his children in times of trouble. This is Daniel Luke for the Office of Executive. Much love, holiness.